Hey guys, welcome back. So a while ago I built a camera stand to replace my tripod for filming here in the workshop and I use it a lot. But the problem is that it's so heavy that it kind of sinks into the linoleum floor and it kind of gets sticky to move around. And since the stand is so bottom heavy, you can only move it around with your foot, which can be a problem. For example, if I'm live streaming and I'm crafting something, it kind of breaks the flow of things if I need to stand up just to kick the camera around, you know? So to solve this unacceptable inconvenience, of course I'm building a robot. Just look around, where do you think we are? I already have a design in mind and I'm pretty sure I know how to make it work with my phone. So stick around because building montage begins now. So this turned out good, um, now it's time to make a matching pair for the other side. So the motor modules are now done, time to weld them down to the base. While this is all cooling, let's talk about controls. To drive the motors, I'll be using this, an L298H bridge. This will let the microcontroller change the direction and the speed of the motors. As for the controller itself, I'm gonna be using a simple Wi-Fi enabled node MCU board. This controller is gonna connect to my home Wi-Fi and will be listening for commands coming from my phone. Kinda similar to the wall screen project if you remember that one. So let's start assembling. I'm not cutting the base plate right now because even though I'm going with a single wheel configuration now, um, if need be, I want to have the option to go to two-wheel configuration. Now let's check if I didn't over-tighten anything. Okay, so this one works. And this one works too. <laughs> now to control this robot with my phone, I decided to use this service slash Arduino library called Blink. It consists of two parts, the library file that you upload to your Arduino, you know, to run your project and everything, and the Blink app that you download on your phone to build the interface for it. I think it costs money if you want to build a super elaborate app like with all kinds of web hooks and graphs and sensor readings, but since I need only a joystick controller, um, this is gonna be perfect for me. I just finished the code for the controller, so now I'm just gonna show you how to build an interface on the Blink app. In the Blink app, you just hit new project and type in the name of your project. In my case, it's gonna be like a camera bot. And then you select the device. Uh, since I'm using a Node MCU, that's what I'm gonna be selecting. Yeah. And connection type, Wi-Fi. And then we create a project. Oh, I got a token sent to my email that I will need to include into my Arduino sketch. So now it's time to build the UI. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the blank screen and select um, joystick. So in the joystick settings, I'm gonna change the output from split to merge, and I'm gonna make sure that the pin that's selected is virtual pin number one. It's because I used that one in the code that I wrote. Now we can press OK and then hit the play button in the top right corner. And it seems to work. 
Man, this is so great. <laughs> While we were talking about the software and the UI and everything, the 3D printer finished a nice little case for us for the electronics, so let's make use of it. So initially I planned on using just a bunch of AA batteries to power this thing just because it's so light duty. But after digging around in the workshop I found this, a 12 volt battery pack which is even smaller. It's 12 volts and it's rechargeable and I think it's based on nickel metal hydrate. I want to make this battery pack detachable so I'm going to solder on some plugs. To attach the battery to the base plate, I'm going to use some Velcro and some hot glue for the control box. Of course, you can make all kinds of 3D printed boxes and mounts and clips, but uh, Velcro is just fine. I think we're ready to try it out. I guess now we'll get to see if the motors are actually strong enough to move it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it's working! <laughs> it's actually working! Huh. So as I see, it's still a little bit wobbly when it's moving over the cracks in the tiles that's underneath the linoleum floor. The only way to really solve it is to expand the base and use like massive rubber wheels that would smoothen out the ride a little bit more. For a little while I was actually worried that the motors are a bit too tiny for such a payload, even with the gearboxes. One of the reasons for this project is to make the life in the workshop a little bit easier. Um, that's including both, you know, YouTube videos like this, but also live streaming. So in order to not run out of power midstream, I also made an AC adapter for the robot. It plugs in the same way as the battery, so I can change them around. Since the streaming setup would not be wireless anyway, because the camera has to have an HDMI cable running regardless, I was not too worried about adding a power cable into the mix. But that got me thinking about another upgrade. I think this project worked out pretty well, considering that the initial idea for this camera stand was just a tripod replacement around in the workshop, so it's kind of nice to add some new utility and function with uh, you know, the monitor and the robot. <laughs> that being said though, you can tell that the original design was not meant for all of this. Especially now with the monitor mounted so far up, the entire rig is very top heavy, so when the robot is moving it gets a bit wobbly. But for now, it's perfectly functional as is, and I'm really excited to use it. One thing that I do want to improve, though, is the phone interface. In addition to robot controls, I think it would be cool to have some more extra buttons, like a mute microphone button when you're live streaming. That way you could not only control the camera, but the rest of your stream from the same phone interface. If you would like to see this rig in action, uh, stick around this YouTube channel or check out my Twitch live streams, because I'll be using it a lot there, too. That being said, thank you for watching, hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Mmm... <laughs>